Don't be fooled. The presence of God is what you need. Look at Saul. You say, Pastor, ah, that's just a, um, a fluke that that happened. Look at Saul. Saul was the king of Israel. He was the ordained king chosen by God. We are kings chosen by God and queens. The Bible says we are royal priesthood. A peculiar people. Yet Saul only lived two years in his destiny. The rest of Saul's life he lived but not as the king. He had not the authority of a king. The Bible says when he went and looked and, and uh, sought after mediums and when, when Samuel anointed uh, David, the Bible says something very particular happened. It said that the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and it rested on David. But I had a problem with that scripture as well. You know, the, the Bible gives me a hard time sometimes. I had a problem with that. Because now this man was ordained, ordained as the king of Israel and Saul, the spirit was taken away from him, yet he still ruled Israel for 30 odd years. And this man ordained as a king was not living where he's supposed to live. What happened? David may have not been in the palace, but he was living with the anointing of a king. It was that anointing of the king that drew the, the mighty men of David to him. It was the anointing of the king that made him invisible to the armies of Saul. You may not be where you are, but if you stay in the presence of God, God will keep you safe. God will, will, will preserve you for your time of visitation. God will preserve your family for the time of blessing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to wait on the timing and the season of God. But in that season, you need the presence of God. Even though you may be in a cave, even though you may be in the desert, it has not the power to override your destiny. You may be in a bad situation now, but if you stay close to God, your destiny will surely show its head. God is not a liar. You see, Saul lived his whole life in the palace, but he was not the king of Israel. That's why David had authority over him. That's why when, when um, Goliath, sorry, when Goliath came before Saul, Saul was afraid. There are people in this world that are living in your palace. But you have the anointing for that palace. You hold on. God is going to make a way. You make sure that his presence is with you. And he will take you to your palace. There are people that are sitting in your job. You hold on to God. God is going to prepare a way for you to get that seat. God will do it as he did for David. But the secret of David was... He never forsook the presence of God. The Bible speaks of him as a man after God's own heart. You may be in a situation now, you may not have everything you have, but God is preparing your palace for you. God has not forgotten you. Your job is to stay close in his presence. Your job is not allow the enemy to bring doubt in your life. Maybe you don't have the car you want to drive now, but your, your fancy car is waiting for you somewhere in the future. It has got your name on it. You just need to keep on your path, keep on your lane of holiness, and you will meet that blessing somewhere. I could never dream. When I got saved, I was driving an old jalopy. I was driving an old jalopy, a, a Honda with those old flip up lights, 1985 model. <laughs> but it was all I could afford when I got saved. When we went down to Durban, every 100 kilometers I must put oil in it. Otherwise, it'll blow up. My seats had cuts and compartments that I could stash things in. Even in that season, the car that I'm driving today was prepared by God. But my eyes could not see it. My ears could not hear the promise of God because I was overcome by the things of this world. 
But when I got saved, my brothers and sisters, I started to hear the voice of God. And I said, Lord, I will trust you. Lord, I will serve you, Lord. I will seek your presence day and night. And I know, God, that you, your, your thoughts for me are good to bless me and to prosper me. I know I'm going to taste it and I'm going to see it. But in the interim, I'm going to ensure that I'm in your presence. Because I know this enemy. He's going to come and try to forfeit my destiny and cause me to just live like Adam lived 900 years but did nothing for the kingdom. God, I want to be used for your glory. God, I want to be used for your presence, God. Have you got a desire to be used by God? I don't know about you, but I can't live life waking up every day just in the routine of life. Oh, it's ring, 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 ding, 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 five o'clock. Oh, let me jump out of the bed. If you, if you go through your morning routine, you, it's by the book every, every minute. You got so many minutes to go to, to have a brush your teeth, so many minutes to have a shower, so many minutes to have your breakfast. Then you're out on the road, you leave home at a certain time. What's happened to you? Did God call you to live just like that? There must be some joy. There must be some passion for your life. Adam lived 900 years on the earth and he died and he was with God. But for 900 years, he never knew the goodness of God in the land of the living. I want to tell you something. There's no need for cars in heaven. There's no need for marriages in heaven. We will all be brothers and sisters in heaven. There's no need for children. There's no need to make memories. These things are the gifts that God gave us on the earth. Why aren't you living with it? Why aren't you making those memories? This is for the earth. This is the invitation to the Christian life. Don't be comfortable like Adam and say, you know what? If I was Adam, I would be repenting at that gate every day. Oh God, please God, please forgive me. This is a forgiving God. Even Cain killed his brother, but God didn't slay him. God still gave him and, and made sure no one will touch him after that. We all fall short of the glory of God. Live a life pursuing that Christian inheritance. We are different to this world, my brothers and sisters. You can't sit with someone in the world and say, oh, the economy is so bad. They're going to retrench us at work. And you say, yeah, I don't know where I'm standing. What you did is you demoted yourself. You put yourself at the standard of this world. You are a son and a daughter of God. Dominion over all the power of the enemy. That is your inheritance. Believe it, live it, speak it. And someone comes and tells you, you tell him, hey, my brother, my sister, I love you, but I'm not part of that, that dispensation. I'm part of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm a supernatural child. Supernatural things happen in my life. Hallelujah. Are you, are you expecting those things? Or do you just degrade yourself to normality? Come on, you got to walk like a son or daughter of God. You got to believe it. You got to talk it. You got to wrap yourself around people that talk destiny. People that have faith. That's how you see the miracles of God. It's an invitation. The Bible says in the book of John 3, 16, Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That tells me you have an option whether to believe it or not. You want to be an Adam and live your life and go to heaven. Or you want to be like one of the great men like, Adam, like Abraham or Isaac and Jacob that lived their life and went to heaven. But on the earth, they put some serious work for the kingdom of God. God wants to use you. God wants to use your family. He wants to use your children. He wants you to become a vessel on the earth. He wants you to find the joy in, in seeking his presence. There must be a hunger inside of you. For
must be more. There must be more. It's fine, Abby. Fine. There must be more to this walk. Hallelujah. Now, Pastor, where is the fear of the Lord? The book of Psalms 16. Now, after you, after I explained all of this, I want to show you what is the true fear of the Lord. Psalm 16, from verse 11. You will show me the part of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. Let's go to the book of Psalms 51. From verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach the transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. So the fear of God is not the way a child fears God. The fear of God, the true righteous fear of God is the fear of not living in the presence of God. Because you have come to a, a conscious decision in your life that apart from the presence and communion with God, I do not walk in the dominion of God. That is the fear of God. The fear to always be in the presence of God. The fear to never do anything that will take you out of that communion with God. That is the fear of God. When you do something and you know inside of your heart, the Bible said you're not supposed to do that. You don't need anyone to tell you that it's wrong. It is the fear of God in your life that will draw you back to that place where you need to be. Because you have come to a conscious decision to know that I will never want to live life without the presence of God again. Because I once lived. That's what that song says. I am no longer a slave to fear. But I am a son of God. I lived that life without the presence of God. I lived the life where the storms of this world had power over me. I lived that life where the words of man had power over me. But then I was, I was transformed by the blood of Jesus. And I live a life, overcoming life. Where man can speak, but the word of God will stand in my life. Where the storms of this world can come, but I will overcome it by the power of his name. Why must I go back to that life? I have been redeemed from that life. I remember in that life, the doctor said we couldn't have children. But in this life, God gave us two beautiful daughters. I remember in that life, I was bound in alcohol and drugs. In this life, I have authority over it. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. Behold, all things are new and all things have been made new. Why must I go back? There is a line being drawn by the blood of Jesus. And it puts me in a covenant I accepted the invitation to the life of a Christian brother. And it is the fear of being on the other side that drives me on this side. That is the true fear of God. It is not about a God that is holding up a rod and saying, if you don't do this, five of the best. If you don't do this, I'll take this and I'll take that. God does not give and take away. God gave you everything. God gave you your garden. He's not going to take it back. It's you that's going to open the door that will allow the enemy to come and steal and kill and destroy. That is his nature. It's not the nature of God. And so the fear of God is to ensure that my family, my children, my wife, myself, join ministries is on this side of the line, on this side of the blood. That is the fear of God. And in every part of your life, that fear will guide you 
to ensure that you are in his presence, in communion with God. To ensure that you wake up in the morning and make sure that you are praying to this God. Not praying because it's a religious thing. Not praying because I'm, I'm going to make myself holy. No. No, be it far from me. I pray so I stay on this side. My prayer builds a wall. My prayer builds a wall that fortifies my family in the presence of God. My prayer is not about making me holy. My prayer is about building a wall so that the enemy cannot come into my home. Because I have come to the realization that if I'm going to walk in my inheritance as the son and daughter of God, I need to be on this side. And many of us, we pray because it's a good thing. We pray not with the fear of God. We sing and we worship because it's a good thing. We preach because it's a good thing. We must learn how to preach for the fear of God. We must learn how to worship because of the fear of God. We must learn how to pray because of the fear of God. We must learn how to read the Bible because of the fear of God. That is what the fear of God truly is. And that's why I get so frustrated when the mic is not working. When there's a funny noise. Because the presence of God has come for his people. The anointing has come to feed God's people. Where is the fear of God? If we allow the mics to go off. Are you listening sound guys? This is God's house. Everything must be done correctly so that the anointing of God can come. I have a fear not to avoid what the anointing comes for. You see the anointing of God comes for a reason in your life. And I, as a man of God, I do not want anything in my house to deter that presence of God. To stop it from flowing in my home. Because I know my wife needs the presence of God. To be the mother that she needs to be. I know my daughters need the presence of God. To be the woman that God has called them to be. I know that I need the presence of God. Therefore anything in my garden. That stops that presence and that communion with God. To continue. I stop it. I build a wall. How do I stop it? I start to pray. I'm a builder. I build a wall and I fortify my family. Oh, listen to what the psalmist says in Psalm 91. He said, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I shall say of my God that He is my fortress. Fortify your family with the presence of God. Fortify your children's destiny with prayer. Not to be holy. Fortify your family. I go to the Lord with fear in my heart. With trembling in my soul. That he is the God that I need. Not because it makes me holy. Not, I'm not going to read a, a book that says 10 points to forget the favor of God. The fear of God. Fear of God. I close with this. Give me another two hours and I'm finished. Proverbs chapter 9. Verse 10, listen to this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I give tithes. Let me finish up with your message. While the revelation of God is flowing. I give tithes because of the fear of God. Because I know that as long as I'm tithing, my finances on this side of the wall. Do you understand that? That's why I do it. I'm telling you all there's coming a time in this church where there will never be preached another message on offering. When the fear of God, when the presence of God comes into this house, a man will not stand when he has not given what is due to the Lord. When the fear of God dwells in your heart, 
You don't need no one. I, I was sitting there and I was listening to Pastor Rishan preach on offering. It's all good for the new people. But I realized today there were no new people. We all have heard it before. There's no one, no one needs to convince me really. Because I've got a fear in my heart. Because I know I need my finances on this side of the fence. And I have to make decisions to keep it on this side. So when I come to church, when we, before we pray in our house and come, we've already decided how much offering we're giving. Uh, the girls got their offering. We, we give them half and they take half from their spending. They must give unto God from their side as well. They're big enough now. They can't just live on my offering. They have to start sowing seeds. So they give their half. I give my half. My wife got an offering. I got my offering. It's in my pocket. I'm coming to church. It's irrelevant what Sibogile or Francis or my wife will tell me in church. I have prepared in my heart the seed that I will give to God because I have a fear. I have a reverence for the things of God. The church needs to have a reverence. We don't need to be motivated to have the fear of God. No amen. Give me one amen. Huh? Come on now. It's for your own good. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Yesterday I was in, I was far away from this land. I was in, right on the border, close to Zimbabwe, like yesterday afternoon actually. And I was preaching to some pastors there. And I'm doing the ordination class in uh, Palabora. And so in the, in the middle of the, in the second session, I stopped all the pastors. I said, right, men of God, we're going to give unto the Lord. You must see their faces. And I told them, how do you expect to build for God in your own strength? You know what we do in this church is done in very few churches. Do you know that? Do you all notice something that happens in this church? Why does it happen? Even in ordination, I make sure I tell the worshippers, you all give offering as well. Do you all see what happens on a Sunday morning? The first person that Yagendra will come to is me. My offering goes in there first. Then it's my wife's. And then it's the worship team. And then they come to you all. Do you all see that? Why do I do that? Fear of God. The fear of God burning in my heart. As, a, as the high priest of this home. If I do not know how to give an offering unto God. How do I lead God's people? How do I keep your finances in this house on this side of the fence? By tithing. Do you know every month, and I'm not, I'm just, I, I just feel it in my spirit to speak on this. Do you know every month in this church, every, every uh, offering that comes into this house, every tithe that comes in this house, I tally it up at the end of the month before we pay salaries and do what we need to do in the church. And I tithe 10% of this house to my spiritual father. He doesn't need the money. It's principle. Because if I preach to you about tithes, I must love it. I, I don't want to keep joy ministries on the wrong side of the fence. How do I keep us in honor and in the covenant of God? We tithe. My children, their grandmother will give them uh, spending. Even if they're spending, they must tithe. Because in my house, we will tithe. Not because the pastor said so. Because I have a fear of God. There will come a time in this house where we will never preach again on that. Just a quick exaltation for those that are new believers. You know, you've got to teach them. But no long stories. No digging the scriptures and proving and proving and proving. Just a quick exaltation. Ah, it's time to give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the church is jumping for joy. Just hold on. Give me one more minute before you give your money. <laughs> Joy. The fear of the Lord will do that. David said something, and I close with this. David said something powerful. A man that had all the gold and the silver in the world, he said, Catch this. I will give nothing unto the Lord that costs me nothing. Did I say that doesn't sound right? I will not give anything. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. I will not give anything unto the Lord that costs.
cost me nothing. You don't need someone to motivate you. Then you're giving out of emotions. Keep that money. Or buy a Big Mac on the way home. Because it got no spiritual fruit in it. You were moved by emotions. But when your spirit tells you that you need to give unto God, then it carries spiritual seed to give birth to a harvest. But you have to have the pastor to teach you. You have to have the people in church because they must teach you that principle. But it mustn't be the reason of your giving. The fear of the Lord. My brother and sister, you go in your garden and you ensure through the fear of God that you keep the presence of God in your garden. God, oh, there's too much of revelation. I, I don't know how to stop the service. In the garden of Eden, God grew the trees. God grew the fruit. God brought the meat. And he is saying this morning, your garden that I have given you, your family, you tended and ensured that my presence is in there. And I will cause the growth. I will speak to the ground and it will bring forth fruit. I will speak in the ground of your family and I will bring forth fruit. I will speak in the ground of your work and bring forth promotion because promotion cometh from the Lord. Your job, your job is to fortify your garden. Fortify your family with the presence of God in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving before the Lord. Have you got a revelation this morning? Hallelujah. So remember y'all are children of God. Let's stand to our feet. We are children of God. And it is an invitation of a life of dominion, a life of authority, a life set apart for the glory of God. Oh Lord, I bring your people